brand building. Specifically, you know, to be exact, December 2018, I wrote this. I'm currently um, repurposing my my Advocacy Friday live stream. Yes, Advocacy Friday Season 2 has just started. And if you haven't, uh, you, have, you missed out on that LinkedIn, go to my YouTube channel right now. Now, I'd like to... Um, I'd like to take this time to talk to you, talk to you LinkedIn about um, the two YouTube metrics that, well, that are somewhat, uh, that are somewhat worth its weight in gold or, well, or in gold or in Bitcoin or whatever, whatever investment vehicle you'd like to compare it to. But for, let's go to the, let's go to the old school one. The two YouTube metrics that are worth its weight in gold, okay, for me, are views and shares. Why? Likes, dislikes, uh, watch time, uh, average view duration, and whatever chubachenes, whatever other chubachenes or um, or horse shit, <laughs> whatever horse shit YouTube uh, YouTube analytics has, they all go down. Literally go down, but views and shares they don't. You can stop getting views and shares. It'll never, it'll never go down in number. Seen that? Have you noticed that if you're, um, if you're, uh, if you're a YouTuber, or if you're, uh, if you're a, um, if you're a video creator there, I, I am, I am assuming that you noticed that. The only way, the only way for those two to go, uh, views and shares, is up. Okay? <clears throat> I repeat, the views and the shares can stop, but it will never go down. Okay? If someone watches your video, even for one second, it's already one view. If they, um, if a... If someone shares your video to other platforms, that's one share already. Even if they, um, even if they delete that over there, YouTube still counts that as one share. Okay, this is what I, this is what I've noticed with the algorithm. Okay, that affirms now my commitment to focus more on views and now on shares. Okay, so well, let's face it. If you don't get views, you don't get watch time. You don't get watch time, you don't get your average view duration. You won't even get click-throughs. Okay? Click-throughs actually can go down. Mind you, it can go down. But, okay, here's the, um, for me, the magic bullet. So, there are two, again, there are two YouTube metrics that don't go down in number. That's why I said, that's why I said it, both of them are, are, are worth its weight in gold. Kasi, hindi naman mababay. It can stop. But, the only way, the only way for those two to go is up. So, those are views and shares. So, if you're a content creator like me and you, you put out videos on YouTube, if you're, um, your average view duration if your likes or dislikes go down if your comments go down all right yeah comments can go down if someone erases a comment that's it so you're so the number of your comments will go down okay don't be sad okay don't be sad views and shares matter because the only way those two the only way those two will go is up they can stop but they will never go down. They'll never go down in number. So, adjust your perspective. Like, like I did. Adjust your perspective when it comes to views and shares. Views are the foundation. Views is actually the foundation of watch time and average view duration and of course click-throughs. That's why YouTube always tells us. Always 
uh, to always focus on your views because that's it's probably the most valuable metric it's probably the most valuable metric because it never goes down it never goes down in number it may stop I re if I have to repeat myself on that I will <laughs> if it, it does stop okay you can stop receiving views but you will never but you will never lose them you will never even lose shares the shares may stop but you can never lose the number but you, it can never go down in number so why don't you just focus on views and shares because they're the two metrics that are worth its weight i'm just about to uh, refurbish the thumbnail on my last uh, on the newest uh, uh, digest of the vertical the vertical diaries because well I'm not quite satisfied with what I did before and I finally managed to well finally managed to get a picture of Nikola Tesla himself with one of his um, with one of his most notable inventions okay what would you call that yeah. it's more like a uh, more like a special effects generator but it clearly shows uh, his well uh, it clearly shows that his theory for alternating current is true it's, it's, it's a you will see the electrical currents but it's and it's more controlled okay the device is under con the device is actually controlling it so I'm gonna put that in the thumbnail right sometimes you have to um, you have to not be content with what you have done with your video and and obviously well it hasn't gotten views so you gotta do something <laughs> you gotta do fucking something about it so my last resort is the thumbnail and well thumbnail is both uh thumbnail making is both a science and an art form but it's more of 60 percent art because you have to you have to attract you have to attract those clicks you have to attract those views and well the best way to do that is through the thumbnail so you gotta be uh you have to make it more you have to you have to make it as um, visually presentable and uh, and more uh, statement like as possible okay but you have to be truthful of course with your thumbnail or it's it'll be just clickbait you're lying to your audience right so that's what I'm gonna that's what I'm about to do right now and well that's another that's another free tip for you guys when all else fails change the thumbnail I just couldn't understand why TikTok has also been an avenue for um, politics and um, basically political misinformation all right there's this um, I don't know if he's American Canadian or um, anything like that but he's uh, he's a foreigner and he was talking about well he was talking about my country's anti-terrorism law anti-terrorism act okay we recently uh, my government my country's government has recently implemented an anti-terrorism act okay, an anti-terrorism law wherein the anti-terrorism council is now um, uh, is now in place we now have safeguards against well, terrorism okay basically every single filipino in this country doesn't want another marawi siege right dala na kami we've had enough we uh it's uh, it's traumatizing okay if whether you live in whether you live in marawi or not whether you whether you whether you were a victim of the marawi siege or not it's as a filipino it's traumatizing all right so that's why the anti-terrorism act is now in place now this foreigner is um, uh, describing our government okay my country's government as a dictatorship with 
that alone, okay, he is mal-informed. I don't want to say misinformed, okay? He is mal-informed about the situation here. Unless you live here in the Philippines, you do not fucking know what you're talking about. Alright? The internet, social media in particular, is a place where people or where, where people educate, where people entertain, where people de-stress, and most of all, where people get empowered. Right? It's the place to go. So, well, politics has no place in social media. But, if you want to express your political views, I got two tips for you. Number one, stay out of another country's business. And number two, when it comes to political views, just say it once. And that's it. Don't talk about it again. Because, well, politics is a never-ending chain of discussion. And, well, it's the only discussion in the universe that should not, uh, that should not go on forever. Bottom line, politics has no place in social media. So, you follow my two tips, you'll be fine here. I'm gonna make this uh, entry real quick. Peng Joon has uh, said in one of his videos that the social platforms don't love you. Why love them back? I'm gonna be explaining on this right now. You see, social media platforms Despite their great features, despite the great following, despite the number of users, it is still a business. They have to satisfy investors. They have to satisfy employees. They have to satisfy whatever psyche the owners have. Alright? So, they just lay out the groundwork. They just lay out the rules. And it's up, it's up to us now to mindlessly follow them to follow them to follow it as mindlessly as possible there is a there is an issue right now that um that face uh that well all content creators face okay they have a huge following for example on instagram but they don't um they don't know who the they don't know who these followers are on a personal level why? Because they don't have an email list. They don't have a contact list for, let's generalize that because, well, I'm not, personally, I'm not into email, uh, keeping an email list right now, but I, I would rather uh, keep a contact list, cell numbers, uh, not much email addresses because I want, I hate being ghosted, tell you honestly, because I want a response right away. Instead of whining over changes in the algorithm youtubers you know this very well over the low engagements over the uh what you call this over the um whatever bullshit whatever bullshit you're experiencing isn't it high time to keep uh to keep your followers contact information handy Maybe you should keep a list. If someone gives me, if someone gives me their their contact number, I I am going to keep it, and I am going to get in touch with that, because it's more personal than for me. It's more personal than an email list. But hey, a contact list is a contact list. We content creators should all have that. Okay, Peng Jun is right. These social platforms don't actually love us. They only love us because we're we're still there, and we're still uh, we're still using their we're still using their tech to send to get the word out, to get our word out, to say our piece. 
Don't love them back. <clears throat> Don't love the social media platforms back. Here's the um, here's the ultimate here's the here's the ultimate tip to piggyback on that. Love yourself first before these social media platforms. Again, love yourself first before social media.